Yeah, classes on Zoom. On uh, Zoom. Now, can mm-hmm. you school us? Can you tell us how you manage to take online classes during this COVID-19 confinement time? Sure. So once we got home from spring break, my school was kind of ambiguous about whether we were coming back to school or not, or if we were going to start online classes like a lot of other schools in Florida. But um, pretty much once we started our classes again, um, we downloaded Zoom. It's an application on our computers and we were able to do a kind of video chat and texting and continue courses by doing like at home activities and um, projects. Okay. So during a normal school year, you have how many classes you have a day? My school has a rotation of eight classes, but we have eight six classes. classes every day. I take eight, but I have six a day. So usually on a normal period is eight, but now with the confinement, you go down to six? Um, no, we have like a rotation schedule at my school. So I'm taking eight classes, but I only have six every day. And it like every day it's different. Okay. Now, with the online or Zoom classes, you have to take six classes every day? Yeah, pretty much. We have six classes, but if we have um, a study hall, we don't have to sign in. We can just stay at home and don't have to go onto the computer for anything. And same thing for lunch. But most classes will at least check in and have a class. Interesting. So how many, how long mm-hmm. these classes take? You have to sit around it's 55 minutes, I believe, for, for a class? Yes, uh, each class is 55 minutes, but towards the end of the year, a lot of teachers were feeling Zoom fatigue, which they, it's a real thing, um, where you're just sitting in front of Zoom and you see your classmates, but it's not like you're really interacting with them. And um, so they would only really have us check in and have a 15 minute class before letting us go. Now you just created a question. What is a Zoom fatigue? So we talked a lot about this in my English class actually, but Zoom fatigue is where your brain is like tired from um, 
staying on a call for so long and looking at so many like small faces on your own screen without focusing on one person talking it's it's making you tired it's so funny yeah so tell me how many small faces you see on your screen (laughs) (laughs) in my class we'll have up to 20 people so pretty small classes it's not usually that big but yeah. So it must be distracting to look at 20 faces on your screen <laughs> to see what they're doing. <laughs> yes, especially when they're trying to be distracting. Um, now, are you guys allowed yeah. to speak or only the teacher speak? Usually the teacher will call on people or they'll open up a discussion and people can start to talk. But if you have a question, they always are like, they say feel free to interrupt if you need to talk about anything. But if you're just being distracting, then the teacher will probably have to talk to you after class or something like that. Wow. Mm-hmm. Now, yeah. this is a very unique time in our lifetimes. What have you learned from this virus? Um, for me, it's probably just, finding a way to take each day as an opportunity at home because we're never going to have this experience again, most likely in our life. So instead of becoming upset or frustrated with staying home all the time, I've been trying to learn to appreciate the time I have with my family before I go off and go into college or become too busy with jobs in the future. So trying to look on the positive side of things probably. So, in a way, the way you answered that, the virus is teaching us to get back to basic, to the family gathering, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. Family I gathering agree. before everyone was busy, take a makeup, drive to school. You only see the person one hour a day, everybody go to bed, and the next day is the same routine. We turn out to be very robotic society. So, the virus is saying, wait a minute, you guys need to interact. You need to stay home. You need to watch movie together. You need to play cards mm-hmm. and board games together. That's what we're going back to, right? Basics. Yes. Mm-hmm. I do that at home with my family. We'll play games and we spend every night almost together because especially when we're not going out, we'll eat, have dinner together and throughout the year we'll always be too busy or my parents will have to go away for work. So it's nice. That's good it's for nice. us. Mm-hmm. So how are you how you keep up with your friends? So it's been a little difficult lately because each person's parent is different. And some people will be like, oh, don't worry about it. Go out. If you get it, you get it. It's just like you'll be most likely okay. And then other parents will completely shut off my friends. I can't go out with them even if we just go to a park or somewhere. So for me, something consistent between all my friends and I is interacting via social media or um, probably just like meeting up when we're both free, having dinner now that everything's open. But before that, it was really just texting and like calling my friends on video chat. So So, um, you open another question for me, social media. Because you mm-hmm. generations, um, the millennium, uh, that's what they call you, social media has been big in your life. How you balance, uh, I believe if I remember Facebook, Instagram, and Snapchat, is any name I forget? Um, that's pretty much it. Those are like the big ones. I know a lot of my friends are on Twitter and stuff like that. So. Twitter? Okay, Twitter. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, which one you prefer among those social medias? Uh, so it, yeah, for me, I most I use most frequently Snapchat because it's something everyone my age pretty much has, and it's really easy. If you go out and you meet people, you're like, "Hey, what's your Snapchat?" Instead of just like asking for their phone number, people don't really do that. They're just like, "What's your Snap?" and um, That's probably something I use the most because it's just easy and it's something that like the photos disappear. So it's just, you can have like conversations with your friends or call people on it. But um, for Instagram, Facebook, even Twitter, 
I don't use it as often unless I'm working with my school newspaper to like work on our social me media aspect. But um, pretty much I'm just using Snapchat, but I'm try to not get on social media as much as some of my friends. They all spend hours every day just going on Instagram or Facebook or something. Well, what are you trying to say? Some people are addicted to it, right? They say on it too long. Yes, definitely. Mm -hmm. So it's very let's, distracting. Uh, yeah. let's go in the life of Rachel's. There's only 24 hours uh, per day. How did Rachel mm -hmm. manage to divide her time? How you divide, let's just um, try. How many hours you mm -hmm. invest on school time, social time, play time? Can you give us a little, like a, a, a division of the hours during the 20, your 24 hours, how you divide it up? Sure, so during the normal school year before my quarantine, I'd wake up pretty early, eat breakfast, get to my school by 7 30 uh and then have classes from eight o'clock to 3 30 pretty much and then straight from there i'd drive to tennis practice get home at like 7 30 eat dinner with my family shower do homework and that was um draining of course and especially during my junior year it's a lot of intense studying and important classes to take but during quarantine, things definitely slowed down for me, and it was kind of a break for me, but also, of course, I would have rather continued to be able to go out and see my friends and play more tennis, but I had more time in my day, and I could still wake up at the same time that I would to go to school, but go running with my dad before I had to even start my classes instead of driving and eating breakfast and running to school, so... Um, once the quarantine started, I would just do some online classes, do as much homework throughout the day as I could, um, work up my extracurriculars, and then go play tennis for a couple hours and come home and be done. So I had more right. free time, and I, yeah, I was able to see my family, play tennis, do everything I wanted, but of course it was still like in a confined version. So how much time in that period is devoted to social media? Um, some days when before my quarantine, I would have no time. But now that I'm home, and especially summertime, um, I'll probably be in my phone for, it's going to sound bad, like two hours a day, just like mm -hmm. being bored um, until I'm able to start working because the pools nearby haven't been um they're not opening yet so once that right. opens hopefully i'll be able to get out more but now i have plenty of time to spend on social media and on my phone so well so this confinement forced you to create a routine because the routine you have before was to drive to school but now you have to stay home you don't even have to dress anymore you just stay home and do everything in one place what are the new routine were you able to create uh, beside, uh, beside the old ones? Right. So um, I tried to maintain as much normalcy as possible. So I would wake up at the same time, motivate myself early to get out of bed, running with my father. And then I'd come home, shower, change, get ready for classes and do my homework, just stay focused on school until after my exams finished and then um, play tennis and have like more free time in the afternoon. But that was pretty much open to whatever my family wanted to do that night. So my afternoon wasn't as like as much as a routine, but my mornings and my school day, it was definitely like scheduled and I have to like be ready by certain times to log on to my zoom classes. So, yeah. So, my next question is, if you just uh, join us, this is Sacred Radio. Our guest is Rachel Mintz. We're talking about the life of the student during the COVID-19. So, Rachel, in the past, before COVID-19, it was a big group called the homeschool family. A lot of kids were mm -hmm. homeschooling. A lot of parents were homeschooling with the student and uh, also the kids. They didn't want to go into big school setting 
what uh, what would you say about those people who say, yes, I told you so, homeschool was a good one? 